Warhammer 40,000, as we all know, is a universe where things can be charitably said to be less than ideal for most people involved. With constant attacks from orcs, tyranids, literal demons, and more, this setting is not exactly a nice place to be. At least for most people. For the rogue traders of the universe, though, all things considered, it can be a pretty nice place to live. You have access to the finest of foods, creature comforts, and companions to keep your journeys as comfortable as possible. And don't forget, more or less unlimited power to do whatever you want. With both that and their relatively simple mission, all things considered, rogue traders have the power to be a force for actual significant good in the setting. They can ferry supplies to isolated worlds, bring word of invasions, and potentially stop them themselves, and at the very least ensure that these planets are listed as part of the Imperium so they can be supported later. All of this can be done, of course, assuming you are a boring person who hates fun. Warhammer 40k is miserable, and the only logical course of action is to make it even worse. I'm not just talking about doubling down, I'm talking about trying to become the single worst being one can possibly be in this setting. Secretly going back on trade deals that cause millions to starve, mistreating their crew, and overall being the epitome of a bad boss are all things rogue traders are perfectly capable of. After all, at the end of the day, there's one thing rogue traders care about above all else money. And in this video, I'll show you just how it can be done. Welcome to Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader, where we're going to test the limits of just how horrible one can be in the 41st millennium. Or whatever year it is. And before I begin my quest to ruin the lives of everyone I meet in this game, you should note that this very video was sponsored by Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. You may be asking yourself, what exactly is this game? Well, this game is many things, all of them great. It's the first classic CRPG in the 40k universe, with the Void Shadows DLC being its first massive expansion, adding all sorts of new NPCs, enemies, quests, and more. Made in close partnership with Games Workshop itself so you know it's authentic, it promises full freedom of choice in all your decisions with significant consequences for each which is exactly what I hope for as I try my best to rip this world apart. With in-depth isometric turn-based combat and a whole host of companions, one of whom is coming with a new DLC, there's something to suit the tastes of anyone here. All of this brought to you by Owlcat Games, the developers of the Pathfinder games. Pathfinder Kingmaker in particular was one of the only CRPGs I've ever played that I actually wanted to keep playing on my own without the pressure of my friends telling me to play it, which is a sign that these folks know what they're doing if I've ever seen one. With Void Shadows out now and the new 1.2 patch releasing all sorts of fixes, there's no time like now to jump into the game. And with six-player co-op available right now on PC and consoles later, you can bring your friends along to do your best to either make the universe of 40k a slightly better place to live, or an even worse one. Use my link in the description and pinned comment to go download Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader and its Void Shadows DLC now, and get ready to set sail across the stars of the 41st millennium, making it an even worse place. Now then, it's time to see just how many health and safety regulations we can cut. Our goal for this game is very simple. Be the absolute worst human being we can be. If I can be evil, I will be evil. If I can be an asshole, I will be an asshole. The singular exception to this rule is that if another action either will or likely will lead to increased profit, I take that one even if it's a nominally good action. The only thing I care about more than torturing my elderly grandmother's eternal soul for giggles is ransoming it off to 50 bucks for the first person who asks. Be they a kindly sate or Kamara's least degenerate homunculus, I don't care. I got my money, I'm happy. First off is of course character creation. I need both a name and a face that represents the darkest possible evils of mankind. Someone who would only hold off on burning down a hospital for puppies because someone paid him their child's college fund not to do so. This lovely commissar looking portrait and this model seems good appearance wise, but what should we name him? Perfect. Specking into our stats, we will make this man into the single most charismatic bargainer I can possibly imagine. The art of the deal is all that matters to him, and Lowen will use his talents to win over every merchant, diplomat, and wandering homeless person he meets to either give him a discount or jump in front of bullets for him. I take the Karao's darkest hour selection, not because I strictly speaking want him to be easier to poison, but because I choose to believe this man would never pass an opportunity to sample the finest selection of drugs in the galaxy. We take the officer archetype because doing the actual fight fighting is for the help, put points into fellowship, perception, and intelligence because that seems like the best option for scamming people out of house and home, and choose the falchion class frigate to be our void ship for no other reason than that it is the biggest one available. With the most fitting name I can think of, we're off to the races. The game begins with a lovely overview of the commoners of the Imperium going about their dreadful lives when we are rudely interrupted by one of them thinking he's worthy of breathing the same air I defecate in. He's the head spy for the rogue trader who's under the delusion I'll be working under her rather than trying to kill her and 
and take her place, so despite his rather extensive list of dialogue options, none of them allow me to take the immediate opportunity for profit, so I'm barely paying attention to him. After several different combat encounters, including, but not limited to, sabotage servitors, bands of wandering heretics who might have just been press-gamed homeless people, and a chaos spawn, we are now in charge, as we damn well should be. What happened to the previous rogue trader? Don't worry about it. After meeting with the other officers of the crew, one of whom we executed because he was panicking after a horrible situation and so there could be no other fate for him, the true legend of Low and Low and Kerr, the rogue trader, could finally begin. Now understand that this is a long and storied legend that could fill enough textbooks to double the average administratum clerk's workload and doom a good 50 guard regiments to death by paperwork failure, so I won't be telling it all here. But I'll do my best to highlight a few select chapters in his life to give you a good idea of what this man is capable of, and just how horrendous a rogue trader can be. It was decided early on that we should visit a relay station, as there was a screaming driving my choir mad coming from it. While the agony of his choir greatly pleased Lowen, it was preventing any information from the outside from actually reaching us, which obviously wouldn't do. As it turns out, there was a man encased completely in ice and yet somehow still screeching into the void. Sensing an opportunity, we strategically and heroically sealed the station shut, leaving the man to his fate for all eternity. The quest was then marked as completed, which means I have done no wrong. We then immediately went to the prison asteroid in this system, sensing an opportunity to press gang thousands of people into the bowels of the HMS Misanthropy. While we couldn't actually set up a mining operation here now, as there was neither equipment nor resources to be spared, if successful in the future, it could be the start of a great deal of monetary income and human suffering. Knowing a great deal of his income would one day come from the misery of thousands of people slaving away in a cobalt mine brought great peace to Lowen's mind. The Inquisition was also vaguely interested in the planet, which interested me as well because I didn't wish to be flayed alive for not giving them what they want. We would soon find out that the warden of this little barren rock decided to lead a prison rebellion, as his pilot politely informed me. They also seemed to think that I would assist them in finding some lost officer or other, to which I responded by staring them blankly in the face with a look of disdain until they remembered their place in life. After butchering our way through a small horde of malnourished prisoners, a worthy foe indeed, we meet a member of the rogue trader house in charge of this little area of space. Overjoyed at the prospect of having another man of noble blood to speak to, I persuade the young man to hand me over his access codes. It wasn't so much a matter of needing them as much as the fact that they were something I didn't have and this would not stand. He also apparently wants to save the warden in spite of the fact this man has already been destined to die by virtue of standing between me and disposable labor, but I do wish him luck in getting himself killed, hoping he does just that. Unfortunately, he only got as far as being brutally tortured, but thankfully it was by the warden himself, which saved me a bit of time looking for him. This occurred about five seconds after I last spoke to him in the room right next door, proving to me what I immediately suspected. This man cannot be trusted with any sort of wealth or power, and I would be happy to take what he has of both from him. First though, we had to kill the warden and his guards who seemed to think they had a chance at stopping us. We politely informed them that this was not to be. The warden took a few times to be convinced of this, but after smashing some mirrors and smashing his skull in a few times, he finally understood where he belonged. Six feet under, and with his soul presumably consigned to hell. Returning to the ship, Lowen was also faced with an issue of his servitors acting strangely, and remembering how the last time this happened an attempt on his life was made, he immediately demanded one be ripped apart and inspected. Not because he actually thought it would help, but because the possibility that this thing was in immense pain during the procedure gave him some measure of satisfaction. The rest were then put back to work because they were not an immediate threat, and if something went wrong, that was a problem for the poor people on the ship. Unfortunately, we didn't end up requiring the crew that we needed, but I left happy knowing that I was able to leave a man in tatters by letting him get tortured by his traitorous best friend. Anyways, whatever the hell this is also happened. I don't really know what's going on, but it felt worth mentioning. Apparently, I had a bit of a death cult in the middle of my ship, and one of them was to become my companion provided they proved themselves. One way or another, at least one person was going to die here, and as it turned out... <laughs> it was whoever the hell was taken prisoner. I know basically nothing about this woman, and based on her clothing, she appears to be of low economic status, but given that she turned about a dozen people to diced meat in moments, I felt it would be better to have her on my side. If nothing else, I can throw her at people that bother me, and she'll probably do just fine at dealing with them. I made a bunch of promises to her that I didn't actually read through, because Lowen just wanted to get her to stop talking and start stabbing, but I'm sure that it'll all work out in the end. Unfortunately, though, running throughout the belly of this ship looking for my cultist 
friends caused Lowen to remember the brutal torture of his past. As visions of schoolyard bullies refusing to let him sit at the cool kids table scoured his mind, Lowen lashes out and instinctively kicks a man who is already being beaten by the enforcers for some reason or other. This grounds him and allows him to regain his sense of balance. The stat penalty for remembering all the wedgies and more is pretty unfortunate, but well worth the gain in petty violence. I also shot an injured man. The game seems to think this was a mercy killing, but I was just in it for the thrill. This is not the last time I do this. In fact, just assume that even if I'm not showing it, Lowen is taking whatever course of action causes the most amount of casualties amongst his crew. This entire trip ended with Lowen becoming a servant of death. Do I know the significance of this? No. No, I do not. Does Lowen want to? As long as it leads to more people getting hurt, then no, he does not particularly care to delve too deep into things. All he knows is that the loyalty of a death cult has been gained and things are better off for it. Due to all this gallivanting around, I may have been slightly late in dealing with the rebellion, but such concerns are best safe for people who are actually concerned with that kind of thing. The rebels weren't terribly competent anyways, hardly worth worrying my noble self with. I even managed to scam persuade the governor of the world to replace the troops lost in the initial attack. Everyone important got what they wanted, a truly happy ending. Another moment highlighting the glory that was Lowen's life was when he was traveling the stars, looking for planets to exploit for all they held, when his faithful death cult bodyguard Cabela informed him that a ritual needed to happen within the officer's quarters. Upon arriving, I discovered that she had drawn random crap all over my floor. Displeased with this, I nonetheless embarked on this ritual with her, both wanting my pristine floors to be squeaky clean again as swiftly as possible, and not wanting my entire body degloved. As it turns out, it was just a brief spar. She was a bit angry when I asked her to explain things a bit more clearly, but things smoothed over rather quickly. Unfortunately though, I had tripped headfirst into a companion quest that I was under some false assumptions about. You see, when I offered the psychotic, murderous death cult lady to see some of the rituals of my own life, I thought I was on the first train towards a tastefully depicted sex scene. As it turns out, no, she just wanted to see what kind of shit I get up to in my day-to-day -day life. Blue-balled but not willing to admit that was what happened, Lowen discussed with the high effect totem what to do to further his quest to get himself a robust BDSM partner. Trying my best to figure out what the hell she would like, I settled on the warp ritual. Hopefully transitioning between real space and the dimension of pure chaos, madness, and suffering would please someone like her. While I waited for that to be ready, Lowen continued on his tasks with the usual amount of collateral damage. I did at the very least acquire an Eldar Ranger for a follower for all this trouble. To break character, I, Colin, Pancreas No Work, whatever you want to call me, immediately began barking like a dog the moment she came into frame. Lowen however, was sorely tempted to tell her to leave his sight immediately. But unfortunately, there was no option to immediately blow her head off and snort her soul stone like cocaine in front of her, so into the gaggle of underclass peons I call my followers she goes. And Abelard, of course. Lowen may be a monster, but he treasures his valued seneschal, and is also slightly afraid of him, because I'm pretty sure Abelard could 1v1 Horus. I considered it still technically fulfilling the criteria of causing unnecessary suffering by imagining that every single time Idria cast a psychic power, Slanesh whispered to directly into Yearliot's brain. God Emperor willing, this filthy knife here will find a quick death in my services, and thousands of years of Eldari heritage and wisdom eliminated alongside her. To my immense satisfaction, a much better method of putting her through pain, this time psychological, came about when Lowen forced her to blow the head straight off another one of her kind. If this sounds especially cruel, consider that if they didn't want to be murdered, they would have left me alone. Anyways, it seems the High Fictotum got some wires crossed with my request, and me and Cabela ended up attending a ballroom dance instead. I held myself back from executing him over this because in spite of the fact she had an upbringing only slightly more elegant than that of a feral raccoon, she actually managed to have a good time. Of course, I was still unable to invite her back to my quarters, which sadly meant Lowen had to go another night without getting pegged, but I think we're making good progress. A problem quickly arose, however, as soon after I got a Steam achievement mid-conversation informing me that I had started a romance while I was trying to prevent my pet elf from slaughtering a crew member who had hit on her. I need you to understand, from the bottom of my heart that for once I was not driven to my usual heights of elf simping. It was in fact around this point that my opinion towards Yerliet started aligning with Lowen's. This foul, overly tall, lanky creature was potentially getting between me and the sociopathic death cultist girl of my dreams. If she keeps this up, I'm going to throw her soul stone in a wood chipper right after I'm done shoving her into it. At least now I know to be careful for the situation to suddenly change in the future. 
Never again will Lowen be caught off guard by sudden events. Oh, what the hell is this? After someone tried to turn my bubble bath into blood soup, an investigation by the best and brightest of Union Busters on my ship was immediately launched. Over the course of both my crew members being horrendously incompetent and my order of several thousand people to be beat being overturned by my desire to sleep with a man who was opposed to this, it was eventually determined by way of confession that the goddamn death cult filled my bathtub with blood. This might seem like case closed, except this was actually their idea of warning me of bad things to come. I guess a text message or a letter was asking for too much. We did at least learn that a mutant had been killed on this ship, so now I know that anyone with too many fingers or too ugly a face is to be shot on sight. Given the amount of people on board the ship, this might take slightly longer than is feasible, and so Lowen instead approached Zachary Weise, the head of the astropathic choir, about conducting a ritual to peer through the minds of everyone on the ship. We were warned that Lady Theodora did this once before, and the results were horrific, with a desperate plea to not go through with it as she did. I briefly considered listening to him, as despite the the fact that this sounds like the most lovely of crimes against humanity, damaging my ship does not sound terribly profitable. Then I thought more about it and considered that whatever happened, it would probably be interesting and decided to go through with it anyways, hiring some mercenaries to adduct some psyker to help with the ritual. While I was waiting for that to happen, some sort of disease broke out of my ship during warp travel. For most people, this would be a time for panic. For a rogue trader, this was the time to tell whichever unimportant officer I was talking to to go deal with the problem. Yurliet once again starts talking to me and I once again have to restrain myself from putting my fist through my computer and Lowen's through her skull as I am judged by a literal outcast. I also took a brief moment to put into motion my official coronation as the new head of the Von Valencia's dynasty. While the ceremony was not to begin immediately, I did mark what is arguably my first widely known act as the new head by ordering anyone who criticized me to be servitorized. Profits will rise and descent will fall, because if neither of these happen, I will keep turning people into servitors. I also ordered the quiet execution of any nobles spreading unsightly rumors. Hopefully, this will keep the rest of the vultures in line while I go about my business. If it doesn't, my dynasty will quickly become known for the excellent quality of its servitors. Immediately before the ritual was to begin, Idira had a bit of an oopsie-daisy and summoned some Zeech demons disguised as the previous rogue trader onto my ship. A normal person would likely see this as a sign to stop what they're doing, since if the warp has already been breaching into the ship, it doubtlessly would have a field day during a dangerous ritual. Low and low and core does not care, and we pressed forward. And honestly, it wasn't really that bad. Sure, there were a lot of spooky ghosts, and sure, some of them had a pretty decent chunk of health. But then Abelard chunked through one of the beefier ones in a single turn, and I found it really hard to be worried over the whole affair. Even when one of them turned out to be a demonette in disguise, I still couldn't bring myself to care because she chose to reveal herself in front of Abelard. Stealing the final kill for himself, as such is his birthright, Lowen ended the slight nuisance this had all turned out to be, and we discovered that a strange creature in the guise of a human form was lurking aboard our ship. What exactly they were was never specified, but it was said they were almost insect-like in nature, and during the ritual, a golden figure was revealed to have more than the traditional number of arms a human being normally has. Hmm... Now with this, I'm afraid my telling of the tale of Lowen Lowen Kur comes to an end. After such a horrific affair, he needs to spend some downtime meditating in his bathtub, praying to God no one pours a swimming pool's worth of blood into it again. But the title does say Rogue Traders, plural, are horrible people. There are, after all, thousands of rogue traders out there, plying their trade. Some may be noble bastions of chivalry and honor, while others, to put it mildly, are closer to dear Lowen. So with that in mind, meet Karana. While she unfortunately is not our dearly beloved Low and Low and Kor, she's every bit the charismatic son of a bitch he was, and as a bonus, can actually fire a weapon and expect it to hit something more often than not. This will be a rather short look at her life, but I feel it will properly showcase the level of care for things like acceptable casualties the average rogue trader has. During the midst of a long and profitable career, Karana's next challenge, which to all of you watching this is her first challenge, was to lay waste to a gene sealer called Lair. Now, of course, this would be done, but one does not become a rogue trader without having an incredible eye for profit. All attempts were to be made to see how this could be turned from a massacre into stock market manipulation. The initial arrival prompted a conversation where the vile mutants tried to pretend they were anything but the sort of creatures you could find under Asmongold's kitchen sink, and so a battle was necessary. They put up a good fight, but my tactical brilliance that gave birth to such maneuvers as accidentally boosting the shields on the wrong side of my ship carried us to victory. As a bonus, it would appear the entire enemy force was killed during the battle giving us the chance to not only steal everything that wasn't nailed down, but to convert the station itself into a trading hub from which we could conduct business with some less than scrupulous fellows. A priest would demand the station destroyed so the taint could spread no further. An inquisitor would demand it cleansed in holy fire before anyone was allowed to so much as look at it. 
but Karana, a rogue trader, she's a cut above the rest and knows that if you want to make some real profit, you have to loosen your moral codes just a slight bit. And if some of my workers in the future develop some funny looking forehead ridges or happen to have a third arm, as far as she's concerned, that just means they can work with 50% more efficiency than someone with only two. And this was just a small glimpse of the horrors you can see and commit in Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. Was this close to everything you could do in this game? No, not even a little bit. There's a ton of stuff to explore and do, and while yes, this is a sponsored video, I do genuinely recommend you go check it out if you haven't. There are very few other games you can shoot wandering homeless people or armed gangs of vagrants you find randomly wandering your ship, and thankfully, this is one of them. With the Void Shadows DLC out now, there's no time like now to go try it. Thank you as always to my wonderful channel members. You are the profit factor to my rogue trader, the true lifeblood of my channel. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Either way, thank you for watching and take care out there. Yeah, I'd let Cabela mating press me, what about it?